In this episode, Baby Vader tries to murder me again. And we make a template to make a template to make a template. Nomad makes. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we continue building the stereo bench and now it's time to focus on the arches. You know the other YouTubers make this look so easy. You just bend a piece of upcut and Bob's your uncle. Well, you could just bend any old piece of wood because it won't bend uniformly across the length, meaning it won't bend the same way across the entire arc. So after having learned this, I used a thin strip of 6mm plywood. Bending it by hand didn't really work, so I tried the YouTube crossbow trick, but getting both sides of the arc to bend the same was not that straightforward, but I got it to work for the small arc. For the big arc, however, the plywood didn't have enough spring, so to speak, so I tried bending it backwards, but that didn't work. I couldn't get the same bend on both sides. So I tried with a shorter piece. But it still didn't pass inspection. Then I templated the side I like the best and copy that to the other side. But I still didn't like the results. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. But bending a piece of 6mm MDF strip did the trick. But by then it was impossible to tell what was the last line I drew. So I marked it again. And over on the bandsaw, it was time for some drunk driving along the meticulously marked lines. Thank you. 
The next step was to sand down to the line on my oscillating spindle sander. It was a bit difficult getting a smooth line as the arc has such a gentle curve compared to the spindle, but more about that later. I did the first test cut on a spare piece, then I did the painter's tape, CA glue and activator trick. This trick works a charm guys, and from now on I'm always keeping some super glue and activator on hand in the workshop. Then it was back to torturing my tiny bandsaw some more. Listen to it scream. We are building with white oak here and it splinters so easily. So being mindful of that direction of the grain is alpha omega. I will start with a top bearing bit, make one part of the cut and then change to a bottom bearing bit for the other part. This way I keep going downhill with regards to the grain. And if you wonder which way the router spins, use the right hand rule. Just remember to put the thumb down if you use the router handheld or use the left hand.
first a downhill cut with a top bearing bit. We can now do the second half of the arc downhill as well using a bottom bearing bit. My Metabo BAS261 Precision Bandsaw is not what I would call a quality machine. It squeals like a pig when I make it work, I can't get it set up right for the life of me, but you know, somehow I managed to get the job done on it. Of course I have Baby Vader helping over here, using the force.
but getting him to stay focused is not that easy, so here I gave him a whack across the head to remind him. Now he really didn't like that, and got back at me later. Again I'm going downhill the first half of the arc with a top bearing bit. I was wondering what Baby Vader was doing so close to the router bit. Then all of a sudden he force pulls out the router bit and he drop kicks it at me. Talk about the sore loser. Luckily I did not get hurt and this was the spare piece. And wood, unlike most things in life, can sometimes be fixed with wood filler. Like I mentioned earlier, I was not perfectly happy with the first template, so I refined it with my spoke shave and then used this piece to template the final pieces. By the sound of that spoke shave, it needs sharpening.
Another great way to be conscious about the direction of the router bit is to mark it on the inserts with a sharpie. I find that this helps a lot. Here I am checking the grain direction and deciding where to cut in which direction. It's downhill again on the top bearing bit before I do a short climb cut where the grain is a bit crazy. We have now learned to tighten the router bit properly. Downhill we go again before finishing off with a climb cut to burn tear out at the end of the cut. The tape came off quite easily, but I shudder to think how much of a pain this would have been if I had left it overnight. This next piece had really crazy grain going in all directions, so here I had to get creative. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I have marked here where I will start and stop each pass. I even did a practice cut. Again I'm staying downhill or stroking the dog with the fur so to speak, making climb cuts where the grain changes direction and change bits for the parts where the grain is going in the opposite direction. And again, all of this is to prevent tear out.
So I think that's really good. The tiny bit of discrepancy, but it's never going to be visible front to back. You know, I could run them like this against each other through the, the router, but I'm not going to risk, you know, taking these beautiful pieces of wood against that evil machine, risking tear out again. So I and think this is going to be There are some progress great. shots of the stereo bench and a quite recent blooper. I didn't record, did I? Well, again, that is it for today, guys. And I would like to thank my first ever Patreon, Monge Syslen. He has a great Instagram profile, so go check him out. And join us over on Patreon, should you want to support me as well. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. You'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. Cheers, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.